Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. This is a small video about neuropathy score reporting and data system, NSRADS. Uh, we developed recently and is being published in AJR. It's a reporting guideline for MRI of peripheral neuropathy with a multi-center validation study. And these are all the names of the collaborators who have contributed to this work from different institutions. So our purpose was to create an MRI-based neuropathy classification and grading system entitled Neuropathy Score Reporting and Data System, NSRADS, and further on to validate the scoring system with multi-institutional study. As you know, peripheral neuropathy is common and is seen in two to 7% of population with increasing frequency with age. It is caused by a broad spectrum of etiologies and there is heterogeneity in reporting. So standardization is needed for neuropathy categorization and reporting. We hypothesize that such a standardized evaluation, reporting and data system, AKA NSRADS, could be possible to create and that it would perform well in terms of inter variability and attain high diagnostic accuracy. So for that, uh, we create a consensus document with peripheral imaging experts from seven tertiary care institutions. We met every six weeks uh, over the course of seven months to develop the NSRADS guideline. And those meetings involved discussion of terminology, technical considerations, billing practices, and categorization and reporting of neuropathies. So we discussed how to describe the muscle lesions, and you will find that in the paper, how to describe and uh, categorize neuropathy in different categories. For example, injury, neoplasia, entrapment, diffuse neuropathy, not otherwise specified if you're not sure of what's going on and post-intervention state. And then further on, these were subcategorized into different uh, categories based on the literature. So Sunderland classification for nerve injuries from I1 through I5, uh, neoplasia from N1 through N3, and N4 is for a post-op recurrence. And these are different types of tumors. You will see that in the paper. And then entrapment neuropathy from E1 to E3, from mild to severe. Diffuse neuropathy diseases, basically involving mononeuropathy or polyneuropathy. For example, mononeuropathy could be due to hypertrophy, due to traction, ischemia or infection while polyneuropathy could have systemic causes or like radiation neuropathy, sarcoidosis, acute and chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathies, multifocal motor neuropathy or Maxim disease, et cetera. And these are some of the examples. For example, this is idiopathic hypertrophic mononeuropathy of the femoral nerve, it's polyneuropathy, three different causes. And then the post-intervention states, if patients had surgery for, uh, previous uh, neuropathies, any sort of intervention mentions, sorry, for example, like ablations um, or cryoablation or RF ablations. And uh, these are described into near normal or possible persistent or definitely persistent or worsening neuropathies as PI1, 2, and 3. These are some of the examples, for example, from copper tunnel release, here's an enlarged media plantar nerve from prior tarsal tunnel release is angulated irregular heterogeneous nerve from prior cubital tunnel release, so that's PI3. And validation testing was done by 11 radiology leaders from multiple institutions with different post-residency experiences. And uh, about 100 random cases with various neuropathy conditions uh, were presented. There were some normals also. And they were asked to apply the NSRADS classification to grade any muscle abnormality and finally name the final diagnosis. Uh, basically, the statistical analysis was performed as descriptive and analytic. For analytic, we chose uh, in terms of grading severity, for example, low-grade injuries to high-grade injuries, mild to moderate to severe entrapment, benign from malignant, mononeuropathy versus polyneuropathy, and in the post-intervention state near normal to persistent to worsening neuropathy. What we found was the miscategorization rate was very low and there was excellent NSRAS diagnostic accuracy in differentiating milder from more severe conditions of neuropathy. And one of the strengths of this study was and this classification that a broad spectrum of nerve pathologies is covered and can be reliably classified. And uh, despite the fact that uh, these were 100 cases um, we found good interreader agreement 
And we believe that even with a larger number of cases, our newly proposed NSRADS classification will perform well. So to conclude, NSRAD offers a uniform lexicon and practical guideline for routine use in reporting neuropathy conditions on MR imaging. Excellent NSRADS diagnostic accuracy for, uh, of MR imaging is seen in differentiating milder from more severe conditions of peripheral neuropathy. And finally, NSRADS classification system is accurate and reliable across different reader experience levels and the spectrum of peripheral neuropathy. These are references and thank you for joining. Have a great day. Hope you enjoy the article uh, being published in AJR. Thank you.